to worship. To worship. Because you. Jesus has set me as a living sacrifice. Come on, church, lift up your hands to God. When we lift up our hands in worship, we are saying that God is everything to me. Can you say, God, you're everything to me? I bring myself before you this morning. church good morning everyone would you do that with a smile say good morning to your neighbor oh say say good morning so good to see you in church this morning hallelujah hallelujah 
All right, we're going to take in um, our devotional this morning. It says the faith nature. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith walking through love. Hallelujah. Jesus told his disciples in Mark chapter 11 to have faith, to have the faith of God or the God kind of faith. Faith is the force by which God operates at all times. Jesus cast the fig tree and he didn't even give it a second look to see if it will happen like he said. He fully expected it to happen. He operated with the same faith that God operates in. Now Jesus was walking, was talking to ungenerated men who did not have the nature of God. Walking, walking by, the, by the God kind of faith was a struggle for them. He was constantly admonishing for failure to stay in faith. Sorry, he constantly admonished him for failure to stay in faith. The new creation was the nature of God. So walking by the God kind of faith should be natural to him. It is his nature. Faith should not be a struggle. Come on, church, say to your neighbor, faith should not be a struggle. The Bible says the just shall live by their faith. It doesn't say the just shall have his needs met by faith. No, it says the just shall live by their faith. Faith is not just a ticket out of trouble. It is the default lifestyle for the just. Faith is the normal form for the just. Not living by faith is a deformed state for the just. Hallelujah. So you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Remember, you are not a weakling. You have the God kind of faith in you. Hallelujah. You have the God kind of faith in you. It's already there because you are a new creator in, in Christ Jesus. You ought to remind yourself of that truth. Every now and then you just, you see situations right before you. All you need to do is just remind yourself of the truth that you are a new creator in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't allow yourself to be overcome by life circumstances. It's a decision you need to make. Don't allow yourself to be overcome by life situations and circumstances. You are born of God, and whatsoever is born of God, it does what? Overcomes the world. Hallelujah. Now, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, as we go through this week, I want to admonish everyone, go with this mind, go with this strength, go by faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to make our declarations. Yeah, we call it our confessions, but it's actually you prophesying to yourself. And I want us to rise up as we do that. We're going to do that with some consciousness this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, rise up, saints of God. Hallelujah. All right. It says, do we have it up? Thank you. I am the righteousness of Christ. I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hello. You're prophesying over yourself, and I want you to do it with some consciousness. I am born of God, and by the faith of God, I overcome consistently. I believe the love that God has for me, and I function from rest. And I function from rest. I receive the abundance of God's grace. Oh, I receive the abundance of God's grace and the gift of righteousness. I am sensitive to the direction of God for my life. I see clearly. I see clearly. Run swiftly and deliver massively. I am not easily distracted. I am not easily distracted but rather focus on the agenda of God for my life. Detached from every entanglement, and I'm empowered to fulfill all the prophecies over my life. I have the blessings of God on me. I have the blessings of God on me. I bring forth good fruit. I bring forth good fruit, multiply exceedingly, I influence my environment positively. Hallelujah. I subdue every opposition and I dominate everywhere. I am in harvest and I'm unstoppable. Hallelujah. My family is blessed. Oh, come and declare that over your family this morning. Say, my family is blessed and the favor of God is evident in our lives of my offspring. Hallelujah. My whole household is protected. We experience wholeness in our health, finances, 
and all the works of our hands. Hallelujah. Angels are activated to effect every benefit of my salvation. Would you, will you release angels this morning? Say, angels are activated to effect every benefit of my salvation. My church family is prosperous. My church family is prosperous. I declare that my church family is prosperous and impactful in our community in the name of our Lord Jesus. I declare that I'm ending 2023 with uncommon testimonies, Makasha. I declare that I'm ending 2023 with uncommon testimonies in the name of Jesus. I see opportunities. I avoid traps. I avoid traps and I'm seen by kings in my space declare in the name of Jesus my faith is all out my faith is all out to receive what is mine in Christ Jesus I declare that I make wise decision just let's take that together I, maybe she should not wait for me let's stay together say I make wise decisions and God's hands is on my to produce unusual results. It is my season to dominate everywhere and I maximize God's reign for this new season. In the name of Jesus, now declare that this is my confession and it is my reality. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Please join me. I want you to charge yourself up. We are praying now. I want you to just speak. Tell the Holy Spirit to quicken you. Quicken me, Holy Spirit. Quicken me this morning. Holy Spirit, let me pray. Help me pray as you will. Help me. Help me pray as you will. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We are still praying. Mark 11, 23 and 24. Please help me put it up. Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. For as surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. There are two things there. He said, whoever, whoever, I am in the whoever. I don't know if you are in the whoever. I am in the whoever. And he says in the part B, he said, but believes and does not doubt in his heart. But believe that those things he says will be done. And he says, whatever he says, whatever he says. In verse 24, therefore I say to you, Whatever thing you ask when you pray, are you praying now? Whatever you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. I want you to open your mouth. There is no prayer point. You know whatever that you need. You know whatsoever you need. I need you to open your mouth and confess it. Open your mouth. I am in the one, one, one top percent in the name of Jesus. Rada bali gara bala bada bada revede bele grodo bolo godo bolo bolo bodo sha rema jala bada 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 sha ragada bala bada bada ba revele bele be I am whole I am whole I am not the sick I am the healthy hele magada si gere bada bada revede le bele 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 gere do bosho mind your angels are here to bring your words to pass rada ke she la bado bado godo dos hele ma va jaga i vrema na gada ba yete le bosha reba la gada bala bala I am wiser. I'm richer, stronger. I am My path is shining. My path is shining. Roma 
Matthew 18, 18. He said, I surely I say to you, whatever you bind here on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you lose here on earth will be lost in heaven. God is not going to do anything except you do something about it. Open your mouth and pray. Tell God about that situation. Tell God about that project. Tell God about that sickness. That sickness will not kill me. Diabetes will not kill me. Cancer will not kill me. Poverty will not put me down. I'm the seed of Abraham. I bind you, Satan. Take your hands off my goods in the name of Jesus. I bind you, Satan. Take your hands off my children. I am loose, I am loose, I am loose from the hold of the devil. Everything that concerns me is shining, is shining brighter, brighter unto the perfect day in the name of Jesus. Because I am a new creature, because I am a new creature, I am found in the beloved. All time waste that is restored back to me in the name of Jesus. I cast down every argument, every eye standard that exalts himself against the knowledge of Christ in my life. I bring them to subjection to the obedience of Christ in the name of Jesus. Make the declaration. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In our devotional this morning, I have 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Maybe you are still booting. You are still warming up. Maybe this will help us. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. He said, Whatsoever that is born of God overcomes this world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. I don't know if you are born of God. I am born of God. Because I am born of God. I overcome circumstances. I overcome poverty. I overcome sickness. I want you to open your mouth and pray. Make the declaration over yourself. He that is born of God overcomes the world. Even our faith. Because I'm born of God, I overcome sickness. Because I'm born of God, I overcome curses. Because I'm born of God, I overcome depression. Because I'm born of God, I overcome oppression. I overcome setbacks. I overcome delay. Call those things that are not as though they were. Anything you want to see in your life, call it up, call it up, call it up. They will manifest. You have the same capacity as God has. In the name of Jesus, I call forth finances. In the name of Jesus, I call forth wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I call for stability on every side. Now, faith is a substance. Now, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. I hope for a better life. I receive it. I want to stand it out. I receive it. I receive it. 
Whatever I bind down, it is bound in heaven. Satan, I bind your hands. I bind your hands. I chase you out of my premises. I'm the best of my kind because I'm born of God. Whatever I ask, I receive. Rama Gada Bade, Reset Dele Balabada, Rama Gabadi Bali Gada Badasha, Magada Badaba, Reme Vede, Frede Vede, Reme Vede Vede Vede, Reset Tele Badabada, Reme Gada Badaba. My children are better than the way they were before. My children are upgraded in their minds in the name of Jesus. All the hell is working. The hell is working in the name of Jesus. Rada Balabada Gada, Reset Dele Bele Gada Bado, Reme Vede Bede. I have streams of incomes. I have streams of income. I die like the God kind is coming to me. I receive my reward now. All oh, the reward of my labor. I receive it now. I walk into the labors of others in the name of Jesus. This is our season of mischief. Expansion everywhere. Expansion everywhere. On the left, I expand. To the right, I expand. To the top, I expand. I'm functioning in the top 10 in the name of Jesus. I'm 10 times better. Hundred times better in the name of Jesus. Masotoli baragada, radi mena geda besha, robola bodo 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 mo, ile masata la badasha, rekete le bolo bodo bodo bodo, masebe le bega do bolo bodo bodo. We exalt you, Holy Ghost. We thank you for executing all our demands in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We may be seated in God's presence. Lord, we worship you this morning. There is no like you. For in your presence, there is fullness of joy. And as we behold you as in a glass, we are changed from glory to glory. Glory to God. Somebody just lift up your voice of worship and worship him. Just pray in other tongues. In a mano said the Gade Bradosha, hey, Anamada Babala Sentosia Latay. Just enjoy the presence of God this morning. Just go ahead and just pray under your breath. Hey, Hada Dada Bala Sina Nosa, hey, Anamada Male.
there is instructions, there is direction, there is idea, there is liberty. And as we sing, it's your face. It's your
our Lord, our shepherd, our provider. The one that protects, the one that forgives, the one that heals, the one that stands beside us in all true thing and thing. You are our covenant partner. You are our ever-present help. Lord God Almighty, we recognize that great are you, Lord. In all creation, you are. You are. You are the creator of creation. You are the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The one who was, who is, and is still to come. Lord, we worship you from the depths of our hearts. And we commit this service into your hands. We say, Lord, have your way. Do what only you can do. Breathe upon your word. Let your word come alive in our hearts. Give us instruction, direction. Let your spirit have its way in our lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Shout Alabasin. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Ephesians 1. Let's read from verse 15. Ephesians 1, verse 15. Pick up your Bibles. Ephesians 1, 15. And if you don't have your Bibles, just look at the project, um, projection screen or the TV screen. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1, from verse 15. Okay. Yeah. Ephesians 1 from verse 15. I'm going to be reading the, okay. Maybe let's read together the new KJV so that, because I'm reading Amplified. So let me just read this. Therefore, I also, okay, just so that you are aware, it's continuation of um, Thursday service. I said that we were going to continue and finish up on Ephesians chapter 1. So we're doing that. And there's a reason also why we're doing it early, because, um, one use what is written there. So Ephesians 1 verse 15, it says, Therefore I also, after I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your love for all the saints. Read verse 16, please. Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. I read 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18, read the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Verse 19 I read, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. Verse 20, which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. 21, Far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Verse 22. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Verse 23. Which is his body? Let's read together. Which is his body? The fullness of him who fills all in all. Hallelujah. One of the things about that scripture, the, the main core of verse 15 all the way to 23 was a prayer. But I needed us to read the context of the prayer so that you can understand that the person we are praying to is the all-powerful, all-sufficient God. The person we are praying to is far above all things. The person we are praying to that who answers all prayer is the one we are talking to. We are not talking to somebody who does not have the capacity to answer the request that we bring. We are talking to someone who has all the power, all the ability, all the capacity. And one of the essence of the prayer was that the eyes of understanding will be enlightened, that will become intelligent in knowing who God is, that will come into a consciousness of what he has provided and what he has available to us, that we will see the opportunities that are available for us in this season. There's a lot of opportunities available in this season, but if we don't see it, we will not maximize. I will use this simple example. Abraham walked upon the mountain. And his goal was to sacrifice his son Isaac because God had asked him for it. And he was so poised on it, so focused on it, he didn't see any other thing. So he had gotten up the mountain, settled down, built the altar, put his son on the altar, had tied him up, put him there, had already made provision to slaughter him and then set him as a burnt offering and then now cry unto God, raise back the ashes 
back to life because you said this is in this one will all my descendants come from. So he had already prepared and rehearsed himself. But you will see from the scriptures that the Bible says there was a ram caught in the ticket that was already there before he showed up. But he could not see it because what he was focused on was what he was on. Whereas there was provision for him that Isaac did not need to die. But God had to call him, Ah, Abraham, I can see that whatever I tell you to do, you will do. See, 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 calm down, calm down. There is already a ram caught in the ticket. Take a hold of it, slaughter it, because that's what I want as my sacrifice. And Bible makes us know that Abraham went, released Isaac, brought the ram, put it there, Kill the animal and burnt it as a burnt offering. But there is a crucial thing there. There was an opportunity around him, but he didn't see it. How many opportunities are around you right now that you cannot see? I want us to all close our eyes and just pray for some few minutes. I'm going to give you like three minutes to pray for yourself. Lord, open the eyes of my understanding. You know, when we pray this Pauline prayer, we pray it as if, you know, Lord, let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. You do not practicalize what it could do for you. Because in your business, it can show you the opportunity. In your marriage, it can show you the opportunities. You've been quarreling. You've been fighting each other for a long while. There is an opportunity there to bring peace in. And you don't see it. You've got to pray and ask God. Maybe right now, you're parenting your children. Your children are in teenage age. And it's like, oh God, all hell is loose. And whereas, there's an opportunity to be their partner in progress. And build them up the right way. We've got to see the opportunities. Heavenly Father, open our eyes to see open our ears to hear as we pray in the spirit jehovah assist us to pray this out completely in its fullness in the name of jesus begin to pray for yourself lord that the eyes of understanding will be enlightened that i may know the hope to which you have called me this season that you have called me into that i may understand the opportunities you have placed around me the people the resources everything you have placed around me that i may understand in jehovah that I may come into a consciousness. Pray for yourself. That the eyes of my understanding will be enlightened. Lord, where my career is concerned, where the business is concerned, where the opportunities are around me. Jehovah, open my eyes to see opportunities in my relationships that I'm not maximizing. People you've sent it to my life that I do not recognize uh, for who they really are as destiny helpers, uh, but I just recognize them as friends. Uh, Jehovah, open my eyes to see. Uh, let the scales fall off that I may see as I should see. That I no longer see men as trees, uh, but I see clearly. Uh, that the eyes of my understanding will be enlightened. Uh, that I may know. Uh, that I may come into a consciousness, into a conviction, into an understanding. Uh, come into a reality into a Omar Libra dosoto into a conviction la creato sopra dosoto re pa casa fanande le brigade bosha re pa sufra di kiakba re bo sopra to sofeketea i got le brigade bosha kata rande le brigade bosha rande le brigade bosha ri pa sufra de ke ate si branondo re ke le brigade boshi kiata e branto subra kata la kalaba re bo sufra ti ke te ke ne mondo lo bia ma Cosoto lo brege de bosha, re pa sufra nande le brege de bosha, ri kaba safa nashte. Lord, make me intelligent and discerning in knowing you personally, that my eyes are focused and clear so that I can see exactly what you have called me to do. Grasping the immensity of your glorious way of life uh, that I as a follower am meant to walk in. Uh, Jehovah, open my eyes. Kayata, e brosoto lo bregede bo shikidiata, imbatu kubakata ya, e bratu sufre ketelia, embo ligiete zebra that you may grant unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation of insights into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of you by having the eyes of my understanding the eyes of my heart flooded with light so that I can know and understand the hope which you have called me the things which you have said concerning this season 
the things which you have prophesied and spoken uh, that I may know uh, how to walk in the fullness of every of the prophecies uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, open my eyes to see. Uh, show me the connections. Uh, show me the bridges uh, required uh, for me to go from where I am uh, to where I ought to be. Uh, for me to move uh, from this level uh, to the next. Uh, open my eyes. Uh, let me come into a consciousness. Uh, wake me up morning by morning. Uh, let my ears receive instruction. Uh, let my heart increase in learning. Send for the information. Send for revelation. Send for people. Uh, by all means, uh, Jehovah, uh, let the eyes of my understanding uh, be enlightened today. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, I give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, we stand upon the efficacy of your word and we declare our eyes are opened in the name of Jesus. We see as we shall see in this season in the name of Jesus. We know as we shall know in this season in the name of Jesus. Lord, we declare concerning every situation represented here. Lord, we see clearly. We see clearly. We see clearly. We know what we are supposed to do in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise and showing up in the um, Wednesday meetings. I, I see you and I appreciate you. Okay, so let's move on. So I'm going to be looking at from verse 15 all the way to 19. I'm reading the message translation. The message translation says, so, so I'm actually starting from 17. Every time I pray, I do I, I think of you and give thanks, but I do more than thank. I ask the God of our Father, the God of our Master Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing him personally. Your eyes focused and clear so that you can see exactly what it is he's calling you to do. Grasping the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us. Who trust him? Endless energy, boundless strength. Now, in that space, he began to explain to us, and okay, why are we reading all this? We are reading it so that we can have a context for our Ephesians 1 3. Because everybody quotes Ephesians 1 3 that I'm blessed in the, um, uh, uh, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly realms. How to make it practical? How to know that that blessing you can pull to bear in your everyday living is already written in verse 1 to 23. And if you understand the context, you'll be able to utilize. A lot of times, Christians hear things in church, hear things from pastor, and you, you hear, wow, you are, so, you are so pumped up and ready to go. But the instruments that you will use to produce the result so I can come here now. Do you know that you are the blessed of the Lord? Uh, rise up and shout, blessed, blessed. Uh, and do you know that the blessing takes you out of every situation? Uh, and someone shout, blessed, and you shall bless. I can make this place go scatter and all that. But the question is, after you have left, what do you use when you get to your office Monday to Friday? What do you use when you get to your business Monday to Friday? If you don't have the instruments to use, you will know that a car can be repaired, but you cannot repair the car. 
You may have even been taught. You may have been a mechanical uh, engineer, um, trained mechanical engineer. But if you've not handled a car and repaired it before, all of that is still theory. You must be able to know how to deal, how to use the spanner, how to use the, um, what do they call that thing? Um, plug spanner to remove the plug and then now clean it and replace back. If you don't know, you don't know. You will look at it, you will know that this is supposed to be where the spark plugs are. But how do I remove it will be the question. And you'll be wondering. And you'll be looking. Then you go and bring the spanner for the, for the tire. And say you want to use it. It's not going to work. You must know which instruments to use. So in that particular place, it was talking about the fact that you have access to know. Access to see. In the blessing that we are studying, you must understand that there is something about sight, which is very crucial. The first man that was called upon and blessed, that's Adam, after he had been blessed, the Bible says that God said, okay, what will you name these animals? He was going to see things and now start naming. As far as he named was how they were. Whatever he named them, that's what they were. So there was something about him seeing and knowing what was there. Why will God bring first? in the old scheme of creation after all the utohu bohu from verse 2 how why will he bring that let there be light why will it be light that is the first thing he introduces to mankind or to creation except that you must have something there's something about sight that is responsible and it is required for the blessing to have full expression so sight is important that's why you have to tell abraham go out of your tent look to the stars as far as, as, as many as you can number, that's how many your children will be. Then when Abraham, you know, we, in the night time, he can do that. But in daytime, he doesn't have anything to look at. Because when he's looking up, the sun is burning his eyes. So he cannot be looking up. So God had to tell him, go to the seashore. And then count the sands. The, as many grains as you can count, that's how many your children will be. Why did God do that? Because there is a necessity... He, Necessity is laid upon anyone who wants to walk in the fullness of the blessing to see. So that prayer that we pray is a prayer that you pray every day. Lord, open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see. Especially in this season. Because let me not lie to you, in this season, God has already put all that you need. It's already around you. The question is, are you seeing it? I know many of us can be complaining and wondering right now what is going on, what is going on, what is going on. But let me say this to you. All that you need is already around you. Everything Abraham needed was already around him even when he was sacrificing Isaac. Everything. Everything Peter needed was already around him in the sea. And yet he could not catch it until Jesus said, launch out into the deep. Cast your net on the right side, not left, not in front, right side. Jesus knew what he was saying because Jesus could see where the school of fishes were waiting. Sight is very important in the scheme of things where it comes to prosperity, where it comes to money, where it comes to see, as far as you can see. Let me say this to you. When the scripture says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What is he really trying to say? As a man has built an image of a picture inside him, that's how he is. The image, so, 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 so. I'm trying to rush because I have plenty to say. So I'm coming down. The image inside you right now is what you are having outside. You can argue it from now till tomorrow. In fact, till to eternity. It is what it is. And when you want to change what is outside, you have got to work on the inside. As far as I can see. As far. If I don't see it, I don't have it. If I can see it, and I can see it very well, I can have it. I can't. That's not my scripture, but let's go there. Mark 11. You know, we just go straight to 23. Let's read from 22. Mark 11. That's not my script. Uh, still introduction. Oh yeah, Mark 11, 22. 
So Jesus answered. Can we read together? So Jesus answered and said to them, What did he say to them? What did he say to them? Have faith in God. Focus. I'm going somewhere with that. Next verse. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says it will, uh, says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. Verse 24. 24. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Most times we read only 23. Look at 22, look at 23, look at 24. Because there is a context there. 22 says have faith in God. So there was a focus, there was a background to whatever they were going to do. He didn't just say, okay, you know, you just say to this mountain, no. There must be a back, there must be a canvas behind which, uh, in front of which you are starting from. There must be a focus on God. He that cometh to God, Hebrews 11, 6, must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek. The reason why at times believers will pray and you will not have faith in what you are praying is because your, your alignment with God, your picture of God was not included. You only made a request, Father God, you just focused on the problem and said, Father God, you are the owner. No, see, first come with an attitude of worship. It clears the picture and puts things in proper perspective that God is bigger than this circumstance. God is bigger than this situation and God has the power to be able to change it. So when I'm asking him, I'm asking in confidence and in faith, knowing that the one I'm talking to is the one that can change all things. So I am not trying to have faith. I already have the faith of God because he said, have faith in God. I already have the faith of God. Now I'm just now making declarations. So it's different from Father in the name of Jesus. Ah, Lord, I will not be poor. I will not be poor. Jehovah, hey, in the name of Jesus. Ah, poverty, I banish you. Ah, I cancel you. Ah, I, 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 I fire you. Ah, I, no, 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 no. You are wasting energy and wasting time. Because if you really want to pray that prayer, that it will work. That is not the prayer to pray. The prayer to pray will be rather Jehovah. You are my shepherd. The Bible says that you exhibited a grace. Jehovah, you are my shepherd. That's what? Psalm 23. The Bible says that you exhibited a grace. That while you are rich, yet for my sake, you became poor. That out of, my, out of your poverty, I would be rich. Ah, that's Second Corinthians 8, 9. Lord, you said in your word that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ever ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is at work within me. Lord, this situation, you are bigger than it. You are greater than it. Jehovah, give me the download I need to exit this situation and walk into the riches that you have provided. Lord, as I begin to pray, give me downloads. As you are praying that prayer, he will give you instructions. Follow the instructions, you will come out of poverty. So he's not praying to fight the poverty. So what are you seeing? Are you seeing God? Or are you seeing your situation? What you see is what you will have. If you see the problem and see that, oh, this situation, <laughs> I don't know, oh God, oh God, that's what you have. If you see that God is mightier than the situation, greater, that see, 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 even in the desert, when the, the Israelites were in the desert, no help in sight, no country in sight, no land Fatal land in sight. No water dropped anywhere. Jehovah still provided manna from heaven and quails from heaven. Sometimes, we, you see, the reading of the Bible shouldn't be that you are reading storybook. It should be that you are asking questions. What happened to these people? Because the Bible makes us clearly to know that in the see there was no bakery around. And just in case you didn't know, there was no flour around. Just in case you didn't know, there was nothing to make bread around. 
Nothing. No supply. No Amazon that can bring it to you. No Jumia.ng that could bring Nothing. No delivery. The only delivery we had was Yahweh delivery. And Yahweh delivery could deliver at any time. Yahweh delivery did not have any restriction. Even in the midst of famine, he could provide. In the midst of that, somebody had called all night, he could still provide. That's what you pick from the Bible. Then you go to God in prayer with that. And you talk to God and say, God, they have prophesied and said, this is my season of prosperity reign. Jehovah, I am not seeing that prosperity reign. But I know you never lie. You have never lied before. You are not starting now. Uh -uh. Jehovah, if you did it for the Israelites, you are going to do my own. So, Jehovah, open my eyes. Because I know that there is provision around me. There is an opportunity I am not yet seeing. Jehovah, open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear. Yes, speak to me. Send help. Send information. Send revelation my way. Give me an instruction. You are God. You are promised. According to Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4, you are promised that you will wake me up morning by morning. My ears will receive instruction. My heart will increase in learning. You are promised this. It has to happen. Jehovah, as I go to sleep, I expect that when I wake up tomorrow morning, I get an instruction. That's how to pray. That's how to make demands. Especially in this season. It's not to cry, Father, <laughs> is this thing not paining you? God, he, are you not touching what I'm talking No, he's not touching anything. He's not anywhere here. He's not near here. He's, you see, he's not touching not. He's feel, you see, he is feel, he, he's touched with the feelings of your infirmity, but does not mean that that is not, ah, no, 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 no. You must understand scripture. That his touch does not mean he's suffering along with you. He's aware. He understands the pain. He's been in lack. And how do I know that? There was 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness without any food. So that you are saying, ah, God, I've not eaten for two days, oh. See your son, oh. Mm. Jehovah, I have turned it into fasting. Musodawe. Help me, Lord. As much as you have prayed that prayer that Musodawe, please help yourself. Jesus to Sodawe. 40 days. Have you done your own 40 days? Uh, okay, 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 okay. He's not planning for you to do 40 days. That's why he did the 40 days. So you appropriate what he has done and you begin to pray. And if he says, take the time, son, to worship me. Leave every other thing and begin to worship because that's the instruction. That's the direction. Ah, ah. Second Chronicles twenty twenty. In the midst of an enemies, enemies are fighting. They are all around you. Then you hear an instruction. Praise me. Praise me. Olua, huh? can't you see the enemy? Let me make it nearer. Home. God tells Pochentino, Asana that you are playing yesterday. The instruction I have for you is to just worship me. Don't give any instruction to your, uh, your players. Just worship me. Uh, as you worship me, huh, everything will happen. You know now. <laughs> Most of us are wondering... <laughs> Pastor, that's not real. Nah. They must teach, they must say something. He must be standing at the byline. <laughs> and uh, just listen. No, it's an instruction. If he does that, it will happen. We've got to be able to relate that the instruction God gives us is practical enough for us to carry out. Because the people that walked in the blessing carried out the instructions that were illogical at the time that they carried it out. Noah, there was no water that had fallen, not a drop had fallen from heaven ever in the whole history of mankind had ever fallen down. Yet God says, build me an ark. I've not seen drop of water. You are saying, build me an ark. Lord, I've not seen water. What is this thing going to rest upon? It cannot fly in the air because the weight of it is too heavy. But Lord, you are saying, build me 
an ark and the guy built an ark it was that ark that saved him and his family and repopulated the whole world because somebody obeyed the logical instructions that god gave okay this time around stop fighting everybody stop arguing up and down and lord how does that connect with money a godi monwa oluwa but he says stop fighting build on your love work ah now like see god i'm a very simple person i don't look for trouble i don't god you god you know i don't look for people's trouble but if they find my trouble one bambe they will collect And you have been collecting, collecting, collecting. Even the person God sent as a destiny helper, you have collected already. So how is he going to get to you? Especially when he knows it is that anger that is the issue. Stop watching some kinds of films. How does film have anything? I'm just relaxing. How does film have anything to do with the money that I'm looking for? Okay, I, I, let, let me break it down for you. You see, that film, uh, Satan has planned it very well that it will last long. And, f- and because you saw the film, and maybe you are on some sites that they give the names of the actor, you, you are so inspired by the film that you search for the actor to look for the other films that the actor has. And by the time you find yourself, as if, you know, you are lost already. But by the time you find yourself, it's five hours after. And during the five hours, there were downloads that were already waiting in the heavenlies for it to drop on you. But the time had been spent on this other one. So you are blaming God for God, you are not speaking. No, he, he, he was ready to speak. You are not ready to listen. Ah, I will explain it this way. How many of us know that right now, right now as I'm speaking, there are radio stations that are playing right now. There are people seated in the radio station, in the studios, and they are talking, blasting right now, right now as I'm speaking, right now, right now. They are seated, they are talking. But the issue is, am I connected to the frequency to hear them? So the problem is not that they are not... Um, broadcasting. The problem is with me that I am not having a receiver to receive the frequency to hear what they are saying. And maybe possibly some of the things they are saying can benefit me and change my life. But because I'm not connected to the frequency, I can't hear what they are saying. Even though they are beaming live right now, I am not there. I am not available. I don't have a receiver to receive. In the same way, heaven is always beaming every time, 24-7. The question is this, are you hooked up? Are you hearing? Are you hearing what they are saying? Are you on the same frequency? Or is YouTube channel or Aki Popo or um, Emanuela or, or Instagram or TikTok or any of those things? Are, is that the frequency you are on? Because in this season of prosperity reign, those frequencies cannot help you as the, you want it to. Because, uh, see, Emanuela, as, as great as she may be, she has not put food on my table before. In fact, some of the people I follow on Instagram, they have not called me one day and say, you can let me wire you $1,000. You know, it would have been so so great to have that one. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. We, we, we are here. We are here. We, we will be following you forever. We go, they follow you. They go. None of that is happening. But yet they make their money from you following them. Their prosperity is raining heavily on them. But you are here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So this is what 
that person tweeted. Mm -hmm. Let me hear his own response. You go and check for the person. Huh? At a time like this, sir, get busy. You are too idle. You are too idle. What you are seeing is not helping you. You are too idle. Start seeing what you need to see. Become serious in this season. So back to what I wanted to preach. Genesis chapter 39. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Pastor, is that introduction? Call it what you want. Genesis 39. I love you too. Did he bless somebody? Okay, thank you. That's all I need. Genesis chapter 39. We all will be reading from verse 1. We are going to read Genesis 39 to Genesis 41. Read the Joseph story. So let's start. Now, Joseph has been taken down to Egypt. Yes. Where is he? And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. Next verse. The Lord was with Joseph and he was what? Ah. The Lord was with who? And he was what? The Lord was with who? And he was what? And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Next verse. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Next verse. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house. And that he had, he, and that he, had he put under his authority. Next verse. Mm -hmm. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And what? The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and where? Ah, pause. Your brothers don't like you. They decided to throw you in a pit. One of your brothers who likes you, small, likes you small, decided not to kill you. And decided, okay, let us take him out and sell him. Uh, no, 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 I'm mixing it up. Okay, they wanted to kill him. But one of them just said, okay, let's throw him in the uh, pit so that we don't kill. His plan was that he will come back later and deliver his brother. That was his plan. But the, the other brothers connived and made sure that before he came back, they had sold him into slavery. And it's not the slavery that you know. It's the one that they tie your legs, tie your hand, and naked you, and they are pulling you in the public, and you are walking with maybe only your boxer. And sometimes you don't have boxer, and you are just, so, leave, yeah, 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 and you are just walking. That's the kind of slavery that they put him on. Now, here he was, they are selling him like commodity, like meat, you know, as you move that, that your meat, when you are buying meat, and you say, hey, this one, and if it, uh, they, that's how they were, they, they, was, they were buying him. They would look, turn around, turn around, uh -huh. then they would now say, okay, this one is good. Potiphar bought him like a commodity into his house. Now he's in the house with Potiphar, and the Lord God Almighty wrote inside Bible, that the Lord was with him. Ah, could you hear me? You mean in all the situations, everything that he was going through, that looks bad, the Lord was still with him. Ah, no. I thought that if the Lord is with him, as they want to even hold him, he first, ah, God bless you, God bless you. Fire! Yeah! We come out. And hold the brothers and say, hmm, the prophecy I've said before, he must come to pass. Don't touch him, don't touch him, don't touch him. No, that didn't happen. Okay, they picked him, threw him inside the uh, pit. I expect that, like Indian film. That didn't happen. He didn't. Okay, they sold him and his room. Ah, <laughs> and they are, they are selling him like meat. And they buy him. The Lord made, was there and they bought him still. 
they buy him. Then he goes to Potiphar's house. Go back to verse 2, verse 3. He goes to Potiphar's house. And verse 3 says, show me verse 3, please. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. His master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Can I say this to you? That the circumstances and situations you are going through, that you think that the Lord is not with you, you are mistaken. He is there. The only reason why you have not collapsed and passed out and died, because that's the goal of Satan, to steal, kill, and to destroy. The only reason why you have not gone through all that is simply because God is still with you. So, regardless of what you are going through, understand, if you can see God around you, and you can believe he's around you, you are giving him an opportunity to be able to walk with you, that at the end of the day, your master, or whoever, or whatever situation you are in, will know that the Lord is with this one, and everything he does will prosper. Verse 4. So, Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had, and he put him under his authority. Why are we studying Joseph first? Let me quickly throw that in. If you know what the Bible characters did, if you do what they did, you will get what they got. If you can understand how Peter was able to turn a disadvantage to an advantage, and the principles behind the transformation. Whatever Peter did, if I can replicate it, I will get the same results. A net breaking, boat sinking catch. If I can understand how Daniel, in the midst of problems, was able to survive four kings and be in power and be able to legislate and do things, I can get the same done. If I'm able to understand these Bible characters well enough, nothing is impossible for me. Exactly what they got, I will get also. So that's why we're studying Joseph. So can we move on now? Yes, move to verse 5. So it was from the time that he made him overseer of his house that all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house. For who? Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. I declare because you are in some companies, in some employments, in some businesses, because you are there, it is impossible for those businesses to fail, impossible for those companies to crumble, because you are there. The Lord's blessing rests upon the business, upon the companies, and they prosper. Because if it happened for Joseph, God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it for Joseph, he will surely do it for you. Now, the Bible clearly states, and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Why? Because there was a Joseph in the house. There was someone who understood that my God has not left me. There was somebody that was aware that even though the circumstances are rough, I can still talk to God. Joseph was not the kind of 21st century believer that, ah, I, pastor, I prayed one prayer. The Lord didn't answer me. Well, pastor, I've left. You cannot answer me one prayer. Wait, in, wait. In. Why am I serving him? Why am I serving him? Ah, pastor, I'm, Pass, forget, forget, forget. No, 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 no. We are not wishy washy Christians. We are solid believers. What does a believer mean? You believe. So I keep believing because that's how I am. I'm not going to malfunction because of the circumstance or situation. I'm going to keep believing and keep trusting. Regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of it, I'm going to stand there and believe God that God who said it is possible will make it possible. I'm just going to stand there. And I know that I will not stand there for long because as far as I know, he has never failed before and is not failing in my own situation now. 
please understand this. I mean every respect, but I also want to ask this question. Why do you think that in the whole span of eternity, God has not failed the people that have believed him? Then it's on your own case, your own matter, only your own matter, that you say, ah, <laughs> I have not seen this kind before. Ah, ah, it's beyond me. No, sir. Sorry. We are not special. Uh, there have been different How do I say it now? Different examples of me in times past. Eh? Yes. You are unique, but not that unique. We are all meant for an assignment for a particular season, for a particular time. And there are some that will have peculiar, special uh, reasons for being on it, but the reason may not be that peculiar. Somebody else would have represented at that kind of anointing, that kind of grace in their own time and in their own season. So stop thinking that my situation is beyond God. No. He has not failed before. He's not failing now. It's not your own situation that will make him go and start doing push-up. Six. That's, this is not what I planned. Six. Okay. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. Mm -hmm. Go on. Most of us that know Bible story, we know the next thing. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, lie with me. I like KJV. It's a good one. I saw another translation. I said, ah, ah. Okay, but he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. Next verse. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Verse 10. So it was as she spoke to Joseph by day by day, that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. Verse 11. Somebody's wondering, Pastor, you're not going to talk about it. I, I hold on now. But it had happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house was inside. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. 12. That she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. Okay, okay. Next verse. And so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside. -la 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 -la. That she called to the men of her house and spoke to them saying, See, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. <laughs> he came in to me to lie with me and I cried out with a loud voice. Okay, next verse. And it happened when he had heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. Verse 16. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. Verse 17. Then she spoke to him with words like this, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came in to me to mock me. Verse 18. So it happened as I lifted my voice and cried out, that he left his garments with me and fled outside. Verse 19. So it was when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, your servant did to me after this manner, that his anger was aroused. Mm -hmm. Next 20. Then Joseph's master took him, no longer Potiphar now, Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined and was there in prison. Stop. I want to quickly say this and settle something that has been lingering. When we say don't fornicate, don't commit adultery, don't be licentious, don't be lascivious, don't do any of those things. When we say those things, 
21st century believers think that we are talking law. And they say this pastor is legislative. This pastor is just trying to look for laws. All these laws. We're under grace. 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 Ah, sincerely, we're under grace. But please, understand the context of things before you open your mouth and talk. You know why? I read this chap- uh, this place in full context for you to read and see. And I read it because I also wanted to point a, a thing to you. This was before the Ten Commandments. Check your Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. Where is the Ten Commandments found in all these four books? Numbers. Okay, I forgot numbers. Okay, so that's five. Thank you very much. See, I have Bible students. They are still reading CRK, ABCRS. I don't know what they call it now. Okay, so when? Uh, uh, eh? Ah, Eshio, God bless you. <laughs> okay, I will leave that matter. This is before. Yet a young man who don't forget where he's coming from. Has been paraded up and down. He's now a slave. But because he has done well, God was with him, the blessing is there, they've clothed him. Now the Bible says, by the packaging, he's now a fine guy. You know, tall, dark, and handsome. You, 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 ladies, you understand now? Tall, dark, and I don't know where, what, what, we short men that are fat, and I don't understand. And we're not dark, we're just light. Where are we going? Eh, tell me, but let's let's go. So tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> nice guy. Mm. The chest, you know, everything. Six pack. The six pack was causing problem for him because the lady was seeing six pack and fine packaging, and she said, "Let me lie with you." Hold on. It is the wife of the master. Who knows when the master is not around? That is asking to lie down with him. And the wife of the master, the Bible did not say she was an ugly thing. And if you know the Egyptian women of that time, they were a serious commodity at that time. Serious commodity. So the temptation was high for Joseph to just yield to and fall away. Now, he had made a statement. He said, there is nothing they have take that is not within my control. The food everybody is, now me the controller. The, as in, now me, I'm the, I'm the top dog in this house, except for my master and you. And Potiphar also will have handmaidens. Nothing has been kept from me. But this guy did something. And it's crucial for us to see it. He didn't say, why will I do this bad thing against my master? You know, common sense, you know. Ha, ha, this man has done all these things. I don't want to, I don't want to offend him. You know, I don't want to offend him. I don't want to offend him. No, that was not what he said. He said, why will I do this evil thing, this wicked thing against God? You see, the men of old we are not concerned about the law, the Ten Commandments. There was a consciousness of convenience that was inside them that made them aware what was good, what was bad. And it's still in every human being right now. We only dull it. There's something called consciousness, um, conscience, that is inside. It's whether you have stabbed it so much that it... Is it bad? No more. I don't want to get beaten again. But the reality is that everybody knows what is right, what is wrong. Everybody does. But we can allow things, people, 
the circumstances around us, or even the media to tell us what is right, what is wrong. But the real one knows what is right, what is wrong. Because it's inside of every man. You know why? What was the fruit that Adam ate? It's apple. It's not apple. <laughs> but sincerely speaking, it's not apple. <laughs> it was the forbidden fruit. But what, where was that fruit from? The tree of what? The tree of what? The tree of what? I love you too. The tree of good and evil. So tell me, why won't you know what is good and evil? It's inside you already. You can either deny it or, or say the truth and know that you know. So let's get things straight. Grace says denying the flesh. Why do we do it? Because you will see here that Joseph didn't. And for doing the right thing, he was thrown in prison. Let me say this to you. Sometimes for doing the right thing, you will be punished. And it will look as if why did I, I, I should just have done what every other person did? No, sir. Because you don't know the journey you are going through. If you will believe in the one that is taking you through that journey, you will come out better on the other side. And I have my reasons for saying so. Let's read on. 21. 21. 21. They've thrown him in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. Ah. Wait. Brothers hate you. Throw you in. Pit. Lord is with you. They bring you out. They take you from pit. Instead of taking you back to daddy, they take you to slavery. You are in slavery. You know, you did the right thing. Instead of them saying, okay, yeah, in fact, we release you to be going back. No, they say, they throw you in prison. Then even there, they say, the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. I'm going somewhere with all the things I'm mentioning. Go on. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners <laughs> who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. Remember when it was with Potiphar? There is nothing that happens here that is not me. I'm the one in control. I'm the top dog. He had become the top dog again in the prison, in the federal prison, in Kirikiri, to be precise. Let's go on. In Kirikiri, had been criminals. You understand this? That's where he was. 23. And the keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority. See, all of you are reading this Bible story. I'm going to bring some things out. Because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Next verse. 24. And it came to pass after these things that the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their Lord and the king of Egypt. Yes? Before I go on, pause. I pray for you that every contention that ought to happen for you to emerge may it happen in Jesus name go on and Pharaoh was angry with his two officers the chief butler and the chief baker mm -hmm. next verse 
So he puts them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison. The place where Joseph was confined. That's why I prayed that prayer for you. The same place. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them. And he served them. So they were in custody for a while. Next verse. Then the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, had a dream, both of them, each man's dream in one night, and each man's dream with his own interpretation. 46, um, verse 6. And Joseph came into them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad. So he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in the custody of his Lord's house, saying, why do you look so sad? Pause. You are in prison, in Kirikiri. If you, if, you, you see, if you've ever been anywhere near any of those places, they are, not, they are not joyful and jumping around because there's pressure. There's pain. Things are not as they should be. Some of them are confined for things they didn't do. So they're angry. And all those things are going on. And yet somebody has the infantry inside the prison to be asking me, why am I sad? I'm asking you, why are you sad? Why are you angry with Nigeria? Why are you angry with Inumbu? Why are you angry with what he is doing? Why is it that, okay, this, yes, dollar is 1,155 naira now. Why are you angry? Petrol, they want to increase the price. Why are you angry? Why? Let's go on. And they said to him, we each have had a dream with this one. Nigerians are not dreaming. It's happening live. And there is no interpreter of it. So Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Do not situations you are going through, do the solutions not belong to God? Go on. Tell them to me, please. Oh, yeah. Nine. Nine. I help my ministry. Uh -huh. Then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, Behold, in my dream. A vine was before me. Uh -huh. Sharp, fast. Sharp, 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 sharp. Ten. No, we'll just be passing it. And in the vine were three branches. It was as though it budded. Its blossoms shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Next verse. Then Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. And, uh, I... <laughs> and place them, and place the cup in Pharaoh's hand. Next verse. Eshe, eshe. And Joseph said to him, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Next verse. Mm -hmm. Now, within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place, and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were his butler. Next verse, 14. But remember me when it is well with you, and please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. Praise God. 15. For indeed I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews, and also, I have done nothing here that should put me into the dungeon. Next verse. Next verse. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, how many of you can relate with it? I see you owning your own house with your own car, doing well. The pastor is coming to the next person. How many of you know that you are coming close so that they just gave you a powerful prophecy? <laughs> now, nah, nah, maybe next person. Yeah. So go on. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream. Mm -hmm. And there were three white baskets on my head. In the utmost basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh. And the birds ate them out of the basket of my head. Oh, here goes the bomb. So Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation of it. The three baskets are three days. <laughs> Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head from you and hang you on a tree. It's, both of them are lift. Oh. And the birds will eat your flesh from you. 20. Now it came to pass on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast for all his servants. And he lifted up the head, you notice it's the head, of the 
chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. Next verse. Then he restored the chief butler to his butlership again and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand for 22. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Praise God. 23, quickly. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph but forgot him. Pause. 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 Now, I read all those things in context because I wanted you to see from where we stop. Where did we stop in my analyze, analysis? Where did we stop? That's how I test to see whether you are following. Where did we stop? Eh? Please. Where he interpreted the dream for the two servants. Okay. 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 Is, is that right? Huh? Are you sure? Oh, yeah, now. Who is telling me? When Joseph had had his encounters and he was now thrown in prison, I can see, uh, oh, yes, 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 don't worry. The Bible says, even in the prison, the Lord was with him. When we hear those things and read those things, sometimes we just Christianize it and just make it very spooky. The Lord was with him. What do you think it was saying? Aside from the fact that, yes, God's favor, God's help was with him. What do you think it was saying? So let me quickly tell you this. Let me give you an expo before we go ahead. This same Joseph we are reading about was the one that became the prime minister at the end of the day. Am I right? All of us can remember that. Oh, well, most of us can remember that. Abby? Okay, good. Do you know that God took him through a process? Because the Bible says God was with him in the pit, in Potiphar's house, and in prison. Joseph had been in his house and as per, per, as per his father, the father said, stay at home with me. They're giving me info. I'm a boy of your brothers. Anything they do, let me know. You are my informant amongst them. I will make you a cloth of many colors. So Joseph, the prophecy had been that he will rule. To rule, you must have skills. You must have abilities. You must understand how to handle things. So Joseph, if he had stayed in his father's house, will never have been able to rule. That's why there are some people that have prophecies over their head. But because you are not aligning with what God is saying you should do, you are not walking in the fullness of that prophecy that is on your head. Because there are trainings you must go through. So when he landed as a slave, he had every right to just throw away the dream. But he kept the dream and started work. Joseph saw the dream but yet could bend down and walk, bend down and learn what to do. He was coming from a strange land. The practices where he was going to, he did not know. When he landed there, the Bible says everything that he did prospered. So Joseph must have found a way for that blessing to begin to work upon his intellect, to be able to understand how and learn quickly. Many of you, you have the blessing on you, but you tell yourself that I'm not a quick learner. You are a quick learner because the blessing is on you. There is a spirit in man. Job 32.8. There is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty maketh him intelligent. So there is an ability and a capacity in you to learn fast. You shouldn't be there sitting down and say, I have to read it five times before I understand. No, there is a way. The life of God is inside of you that quickens you to give you instruction, direction, understanding. So this Joseph learns very fast how to handle things and after a point his skill and his excellence began to raise him up in the sight of his boss Potiphar and Potiphar saw I can hand this over to him. Joseph prospered. See, I will say this to you. When they give you opportunities, please don't mess them up. The opportunities are the ladders for you to climb up by the blessing. You cannot mess up opportunities and hope that the blessing will carry you up. The blessing will work upon you, maximizing the opportunities that comes your way. So here was Joseph. He handled the first thing 
After a point, they handed another one over. After the point, the Bible says, you read it, we both read it, that the Bible says that everything he put his hands on was prospering. So the master put all things under him. Because they found out that Joseph now in a, 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 by, 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 I don't know, I, the only way I can explain is by the spirit, was able to understand how to manage things, how to handle things, how to order things. How to, see, there is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty maketh him intelligent. You've got to work upon that understanding. While we're at it, if you're a student, that should be part of your confession as for academics. There is a spirit in me. The inspiration of the Almighty maketh me intelligent. That should be Job that's to it. It should be something you're confessing. You should be able to confess uh, Daniel 1, where it says that uh, God gave unto Daniel an excellent spirit. God has given Daniel. He can give me to. I receive. I take an excellent spirit. And it helps you in your academics. But that's not where I'm going. Now, here was Joseph building his CV, his portfolio, his understanding, his excellence, his ability to handle things. Now, Joseph was handling various things. He was not wishy-washy like Christians sometimes are. You see, when we say you are the top 1%, we want you to work with excellence, with diligence. You don't sit down and just say, I'm just going to read or I'm just going to do the bare minimum. No, sir. I go the extra mile because there is a spirit in man. There is a spirit in me. The inspiration of the Almighty maketh me intelligent. So I move ahead. I go ahead. I go further. Why do we say we are supernatural? There is the super upon the natural that is upon us. And we are supposed to exhibit it as we move ahead. So here was Joseph walking upon the things that were going on. And now as he began to rise, let me say this to you very clearly. And this is a law of life. When you begin to rise, Satan will test and try to bring you down. In fact, it's in the moment of your highest victory that will bring the highest test. That's it. It is when we've had a Holy Ghost meeting and, and everywhere the atmosphere is so high. You've received many things. Oh, and you're walking out of church that somebody will annoy you. You either yield to the temptation or you walk up us because destiny is calling you. Sometimes it's even inside the car with your spouse. You, you know, mm, Satan, Satan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why? Because destiny is calling you ahead. So here was Joseph. The young lady came and he was not the one chasing. She was the one chasing him. And interestingly, even in now, some things like that happen. So you are the one that will be like Joseph. How shall I do this wicked thing against God? Not against pastor, not against the church, not against the, um, the law, no, against God. Because if you understand, if you see that this thing is against God, you begin to reorganize and rearrange your life properly. Because those are the leaks sometimes that Satan uses to remove things and put your focus on other things when you should be focused on something else that is moving you forward. So he gives you the telenovela. And you waste eight hours watching series and then you now say father in the name of jesus sir i want to pray concerning my destiny and my finances shamban tuku ras kaba kombo shkele le bra gaba sate le brege de bosha le prosoto lord let me just take this position ye kriando su kaba sha kaba god 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 abianto su i in Jesus name Amen God I thank you because you hear even when I just mention just mention alone you always hear you even answer beyond what I God I thank you I give you praise then you wonder why the situations are not changing as they should because
Because this is how life is. Let me say this to you. Please come. This is how life is. No, no, no. no. You are not protecting me at this point right now. I do not want to say who you are. So just imagine. Uh So, this is how life is. Life is a balance many a times. Being able to balance many things. You are here. There are many things you are balancing. But you know what Satan does? He doesn't cut you to kill you. No. He just moves you this way. Then you try to balance back. He sees that you are balancing. He now moves you this way. No, no, you are still trying to balance again. You begin to move this way. Yeah, and while you are trying to readjust properly, he now takes you this way. Many a times it is an ongoing walk. You are either like this or like this. And after a point, the table begins to shake. Then you see you are going through issues. You are going through circumstances. I don't know what is going on. Everything is... Well, what, the reason is you are not getting focused and staying with God. Because at this point, no shaking anywhere. My eyes are on God. So when that scripture says, have faith in God, he wanted you to focus on God. Remember when Peter was walking on the water, he was focused on Jesus. When he took his eyes off, he began to fall. Remember. See, this life, this principle I'm just showing, this is life. This is life. I'm a freezer. And I tell everybody, please understand this. Titan is of the old realm. It was in the old testament. We are New Testament Christians. All these pastors that are telling us that we should tithe and we should give and we should do all those things. Ah, no, I'm a freezer. So that's why I'll tell you straight that that's what it is. It's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. Okay, fantastic. But, you know, all these people, they're telling you rubbish, 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 rubbish. I agree. And so you begin to tilt to this side. Then you hear pastor. Hmm. Titan is real low. Oh. Hmm. If you like tight, if you like don't tight, <laughs> we will see at the end of life who was the right one. If you like, stay there. You hear that? You will not try to balance. Then, in balancing, you now start taking it as a law that you know, if I don't tight, God will kill me. You know, God, God, God will slaughter me. I better just drop my title <laughs> because this tightening thing, ah. People died. Oh, mm, I don't want. I don't want to allow. So you are giving the tithes based on fear and based on the law. You are still unbalanced. You are still unbalanced, and you are not different. Well, I'm giving you plenty work. Okay, come and join him so that uh, I should be giving my dick work. No worry. I'm join him. So there are two. Okay, come and make it three so that we know it's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Abby? Okay. So, in my trying to balance, because I know now they are saying, ah, eh, eh, I don't want to allow. I've heard um, many ministers talk about that. When you don't tithe, you open the door for the curse. I don't want any curse. I don't want to die. I don't want my business to. Okay. So, you are here, unbalanced not realizing that you are unbalanced. You are just dropping the money out of fear. Whereas you hear another teaching, they say, you know, tighten. Wrong, okay. Everything is wrong. Okay, Uh, okay, I know what is going on. Everything is wrong. Jesus has paid the tithe, everything. While in the New Testament, just go on, go Go on, bro. Hey, all these pastors, they are looking for money. They, are, they want to collect your money. You're on this side. You are still not balanced. And so you wonder why your life is like this. 
I will tight this month. I won't tight next month. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you are here not allowing God to balance you. Proper balance is to know that the tithes and the offerings is in worship of the Lord. I am thankful that you have preserved me. Go and check the Bible. Everywhere, the first set of people that paid tithes and gave their offerings, it was in appreciation of God's goodness. It, they were so filled with that God helped them. See, when Abraham was giving the tithes, Melchizedek was not the one asking, bring your title, bring your title. No, it was because Abraham realized that, ah, this is convenient. This, ah, no, 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 no. This man represents God. And for that reason, I want to celebrate God. This is a tithe of all the spoil. And he gave it. So it's in worship. The issue of tithing is worship. Who are you worshiping? Money or God? Who are you serving? Money or God? And the people that are freezing, I've not seen them freeze still. What benefit have you done? I will say boldly, what benefit have you done to the body of Christ that you have mouths to open to tell us? What have you done? Give me facts and figures of what you have been able to do. Please. Give me facts. You can have your seats. Give me facts and figures. We hear all these people. The question is this. What are the results that they have? That you are a presenter. Uh -huh. Sorry. Don't mind me. Presenting is, is a profession. I'm a bricklayer. It's a profession too. What do you carry? You're one of the best presenters. Nobody can lay as many bricks as I can in one day. Ha! So what is the hula value? Find out people that have done this thing and gotten results. Ask them. Ask an Abraham. Ask an Isaac. Ask a Jacob. Ask the early believers. Leave all those people. Ask Reverend K. Ask Bishop Oedipo. Ask Pastor Chris. Ask uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Paul. Ask anybody. The people that make that are making sense. That your followership on Twitter or on Instagram is real. Ah, do you know why I know? Let's go to voting. The last election, I saw somebody thinking that because he has followership on uh, Instagram and Twitter and everything, that it will translate to it's human beings that will stand up. And when their lives are at stake, they will stay indoors and be praying for the people that will go. To go. But the people that we go are also sitting in the house waiting for you to go. Sorry. Why did I get into that? Move away. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph. Oh, no, 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 no. I've not finished. So here was Joseph. I want to round up with this. Here was Joseph. He had been trained to handle his father's instructions and beating. He had graduated from that to now handling Potiphar's instruction and beating. In Potiphar's house, he graduated still in now handling a household. Having administered and managed a household and they were prospering, he needed to graduate to another level. He needed to graduate to being able to handle a statewide operation. That's why he had to go into the king's prison. A federal prison. So that he could watch and see and be able to look at life from the prison of those people. And be able to know how to order and organize resources appropriately to be able to stretch the resources on hand. Why? Because in chapter 41, 
he will need that wisdom and that understanding because when Pharaoh dreams the dream, it is from the principles he has learned. Handling people, managing things, managing resources that he's going to speak from. So the journey he went through was not to punish him, but many a times it was to train him appropriately for the work before him. So here the Bible says, the butler forgot him. How many of you think, please just answer me truthfully. It's not, it's not a trick question. Just truthfully, how many of you think that the butler did not do well at this verse? Please just wave. Just wait. The butler did not do well at this verse. He not do well. He not try. He not try. How many people? Okay, put your hand. How many people think the butler, he do well, oh. You do good, oh. Bring up your hand. Okay, how many are on defense? How many? You see this butler here? It's likely going to be like every other person you meet in the workplace or in business. Because sometimes we don't read into things. And so it doesn't help us. Here was somebody that had just offended the king. Getting back his freedom. And being reinstated. And then a naive Christian is expecting the guy speak for me to the king. I should bring me out. A condemned criminal. Bring me out. Bring me out. And you are thinking the guy will do that. Why will he put himself at risk? Will you put yourself at risk? So let's not judge the butler too much. Eh? Let's just know that the butler and some of us, the same son name. Same son name. So the butler did not remember. And there was a reason. If he had remembered, it would have been against timing. And I can guarantee you, one, either the butler will join him back in prison. One. Or he is released as an ex-convict and Potiphar buys him again and continues the punishment in his house. Or there will be some other options. But those two options are very available. So sometimes the miracle and breakthrough you are praying for, Father, that you are praying now, as in now, now, Father, and the blood is even coming out. Have you asked him? Jehovah, I consecrate to your training and to your training. Because I know the prosperity rain season will not end without me being prospered. I know. So, but the timing, I may not know. Jehovah, train me. Prepare me for that which you have prepared for me. So here, Joseph is forgotten. 24. 24. Then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. And behold, he stood by the river. That's 41. Okay. Suddenly there came up out of the river seven cows, fine looking and fat. This one, you'll be doing it fast. And they fed in the meadow. Yes, correct. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them, out of the river, ugly and gaunt, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the river. Yes, and the ugly, gaunt cows ate up the seven fine looking and fat cows. So Pharaoh awoke. Yeah. He slept and dreamed a second time, and suddenly seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, plump and good. Next verse. Then behold, seven thin heads, blighted by the east wind, sprang up after them. Mm -hmm. 
And the 17 heads devoured the seven plump and full heads. So Pharaoh awoke. Ah, and indeed it was a dream. Now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dream. But there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh. I pray again for you that the contentions and the calamities that ought to happen for your emergence, may they happen in Jesus' name. And there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh. Nine. Nine. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my faults this day. Pause. Did you notice he did not remember his faults until after Pharaoh had searched all the mass astrologers and everybody and they didn't have an answer? Because some things need to be fully cooked. See, when there is a testimony that is going on, that is just the finger, please, Farabale, organize yourself because let the fullness of it come out before you start jumping. <laughs> No, you don't need to jump. Because here, it was obvious that if he had called before to Pharaoh about Joseph, he won't get the results that Joseph now got. But situations has changed. It had gotten to a point whereby if I now mention I am not at risk and Pharaoh needs help, he's desperate. If I mention this, he will do anything now. Okay. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants, he's talking about himself, and put me in custody. Ah! See, see, sorry, pause. There is a whole teaching inside just this verse. Be able to learn how to package your words in a manner that is not offensive to the person you are talking to. Because he was about to report Pharaoh to Pharaoh. Yes, he packaged in a manner that Pharaoh could hear. Don't just say everything. No, package it. The Bible says, let your conversation be seasoned with grace. So he had known that one. So when he was reporting Pharaoh to Pharaoh, again, he knew how to package it. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, so that Pharaoh will know the servants, but now me, I'm doing The captain of the guard, both me and the chief baker. Uh -huh. Context. Next verse. We each had a dream in one night, he and I. Each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. Next verse. Sharp, sharp. We are going to 14. Now there was a young Hebrew man with us there. A servant of the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted our dreams for us. To so each man he interpreted according to his own dream. And it came to pass, just as he interpreted for us, so it happened. He restored me to my office, and he, and he hanged the other. So he, notice how he's packaging it. He is a Pharaoh, you return, he returned uh, packaging. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. See, sometimes what's the answer you need? the help you need, the way you say it, can bring the help or can chase the help away. I've seen somebody who was trying to get something from me. And I was a bit slow at answering the person. The person just looked at me and said, if you don't want to give me, don't give me. Even God, God says we should help one another. God, Jesus has always said so. I don't know why you are doing this. Of a, a, a error. The kind of person I am is error. You know, I, I looked him in the eye and said, God did not tell me to give you. Go back to God. And that was the end of the conversation. He walked away very angry. And I walked away very happy. My money is still in my pocket. There is a way you can get help. There's a way you speak. 
there's a way you act. We're going to see that action to now. As in now, we're going to see that action. There's a way you act. Because, see, I can guarantee you there have been opportunities for the blessing to show up and answer you. But some of us, is the actions, the operations that I've been mentioning so far, the leaks that have caused those things not to manifest as you want. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him. Look at it. Please, can we read it together? They brought him where? How? They brought him how? 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 Very quickly. Out of the dungeon. And what did he do? What did he do? He what? There is a reason. What did he do next? Change his clothing. What did he do next? Quickly. Ah, Jalo, Jalo. If he had come like that to Pharaoh, <laughs> gone. It was a quick summon. But they understood some things. There's a way to approach a king. You don't come to a king tattered, looking haggard, looking one kind. You clean up yourself. There are kings you will meet in the opportunities that are coming in the next few days. Package yourself properly. Let your CV be well packaged. So that you can get the job. Dress up well. Don't go with dreads to an interview and they want to hire you as a banker. You are not getting that job. Especially when they know it's not natural dreads. You are not getting that job. Package yourself properly. Clean up yourself. Prepare yourself to meet a king. So they had to shave him. Because he had grown beards. They don't give you shaving speaking. So they had to clean him up, take his bath very well. Then they had to dress him in proper clothes. So that when he was going to approach the king, he would look like somebody who can give a message to the king. Ah! He has the answer. But if the answer is not well packaged, Nobody is taking it. I cook jollof rice, fried rice, chicken, coleslaw, moi moi, and plantain. Full plates, man. You understand? You, you, you know that kind? Not, not the Thai, because they have been teased. They're cheating off the Thai. You know that hand that has the body, you know that all cold, and they drop it on the plate. You understand? Hmm? Then, I want to serve you. Then I use a potty. Brand new. I just bought it from the market. Brand new. It's straight from straight from the manufacturer. Bought it from the person that bought it from the manufacturer. Brought it. Covered it. And served the rice. Two portions. The chicken. Two sides. You understand? Coleslaw. Plenty. Moin moin, every size. Plantain. And I put it, then I serve you. You know, collect. Collect. <laughs> I have. You know the funny thing? Any body will not even my son is just joking with me, he's just whining me. Will not collect. Okay, somebody doesn't know potty. Oh. Okay. Why am I using po? I package it in a diaper. Serve the food, everything in a diaper. Brand new. Never used. I just brought it out in front of you. Then they serve the food and I say, take it. Who is it? Nobody. Packaging wrong. Food okay, but packaging wrong. There are some of you, you have all the necessary stuff, but the packaging, you need to work on it. 
your packaging may just simply be that I need to be detailed. One of the major challenges most people have with tailors is finishing. To distinguish yourself as a tailor is to perfect finishing. If you perfect finishing, you will have more customers coming to you than to the person that does not finish. You may not even know how to cut all the styles, but when they know that every cloth that comes out of this shop is already whipped, the threads have been taken out, well ironed, put in place, packaged in a, a nylon, and then delivered to me, they will always come to you. Finishing. Packaging. You work in the office. They give you an assignment. You are supposed to deliver on Monday. It is Monday morning. Seven o'clock that you are waking. You are now on the computer. Then your boss walks in. Good day, sir. I'm working. I'm working. That they don't have counter in your office. I will you again. We gave you on Friday. You have Saturday, you have Sunday. Why is it Monday morning? You are working on it. Packaging. They gave you a report. Even if your English is not that good, there are apps that you can pass that file through that will help you correct all the English sharp sharp and arrange it very well for you. In fact, there are apps that you put AI, you just put it in, I, I can't remember the name now, you just put it in and it will even summarize for you in, in a different English the thing you wrote and you just package it and it's looking and then you submit and they're thinking, hey, but, but he went to Harvard. No, I didn't go any Harvard. It's Harvard AI that is working for me. Packaging. So they had to clean him up. They have to shave him. They have to get him ready. I'm telling you things that you need to do to block the leaks. So that when the opportunities come, you are not throwing them away. And wondering why is God not answering. Because he's answering all. God is in your neighborhood. Though. See, there are people sitting beside you. That have testimonies of God doing some awesome things in the last one month. They are sitting beside you. They have received some increase, some benefits. So, if God is, has touched them, is in your neighborhood. Then Pharaoh said, next verse, 15. 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him. Oh! Genesis 2.15. Ah, there is God, though. Ow. My people, okay, 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 okay. I'm rounding up, I'm rounding up. Okay, Pele. Genesis 41, 15. Okay, since they are putting it there, that's the worship sessions we'll be having November the 5th. We are trusting God that it will be a healing meeting as well. It's going to be Thanksgiving healing meeting and special worship session. We have Deborah Jai. She will be coming to the house to minister. It's going to be an awesome time. November 5th, so please start praying along. I trust God to have amazing testimonies on that day. Okay, back. 15. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream and there is no one who can interpret it. But I have heard it is said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. 14. Okay, 16. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Very crucial understanding. When God begins to lift you, don't assume it is you. Don't think it's because of what you did. It is still the God that told you the instruction. So that he could walk to make sure it happens. That is the one that is in charge. It's not your confession 
It's not your titan. It's not your prayer. It is the God that saw the confession, saw the titan, saw everything, and answered you. So it's still God. And you must understand it. So here was Joseph saying to him, it is God that will give the interpretation. Next verse. 17. 17. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold in my dream, I stood on the bank of the river. Next verse. Sharp, sharp. This one will run through to 20. Suddenly seven cows came up out of the river, fine looking and fat, and they fed in the meadow. It, 19. We are going to 22. I just realized. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and gaunt. Such ugliness as I have never seen in all of the land of Egypt. Okay? And the gaunt and ugly cows ate up the seven, ate up the first seven, the fat cows. Okay? When they had eaten them up, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were just as ugly as at the beginning. So I woke up. Oh, yeah? 22. And I saw in my dream, and suddenly, okay, we move on. Suddenly, seven heads came up on one stalk, full and good. So we read to verse 25, 24 that he was just explaining the dream. Jump to 25. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are one. The first dream, the second dream, they are one. God has shown Pharaoh what is about to what is about to do. Next verse. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good years heads are seven years. The dream are one. Next verse. And the seven thin and ugly cows which come up after them are seven years, and the seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. Go on. This is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Indeed, seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt. Next verse. But after them, seven years of famine will arise and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt and the famine will deplete the land. So the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following for it will be very severe. Next verse. And, and the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. Next verse. Now, therefore, pause. All those verses I read, Joseph, original Joseph in Israel with his father, could have given them that interpretation because he had been interpreting dreams before. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Next. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth of the produce and of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful years. Next verse. And let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Next verse. Then that food shall be as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land may not perish during the famine. Next verse. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. Next verse. And Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the spirit of God? Pause. The second conversation only happened because Joseph had gone through Tith, Potiphar's house, prison. Because he had now known how to organize and arrange. I, I I love you too. Organize and arrange. Okay. Organize and arrange. Yes. He had learned how to organize and arrange the resources on hand. And had known how to handle small and make it big. Had known how to work with something that is very interesting, compound interest. Because it's only compound interest that I could do at that point in time. 
Think about it. He said one fifth, just twenty percent is what you are keeping for seven years. Twenty percent times seven is one one hundred and forty percent. Abi, so how will it be enough if there is nothing behind it? It's compound interest. He understood the principle and he knew how to do it consistently. So he was doing something that we did not read into the Bible. He was taking the twenty and planting again, larger. Mm. Larger, so that when he now brought the seed, the produce in, it was more than what was required, and they had enough to last them for the seven years. There was something he was doing there, but the Pharaoh was able to catch it and say, "There is the spirit of the God inside this one. This is not normal. This is not normal. Why he had been trained? Sars, ma, go through the training God is taking you through." Stop avoiding them. Stop saying that it is too hard. Stop looking at the situation. If you are under a bus that is drilling you, take the drill, sit with the drill, learn to conquer the bus by the blessing. After everything, when you come out and the opportunity that is yours comes forth, the skills you have gained will far outweigh whatever skill is around in the marketplace at that time. Because I guarantee you, there were people that were very brilliant. But they couldn't pick them. Joseph had gone through the hard knocks of life. And he knew how to handle the hard knock that was about to come. He was aware. There are things that you are going through right now. Stop blaming God. They are part of the prayer you are praying. Jehovah prosperity reign. I want to prosper. Lord, show me. How can I walk in the blessing? Close some of the leaks I've mentioned. Build on the things I've told you. Start becoming skillful so that you can be part of the top 1%. So when they need to pick the top 1% to do a project or get into something, and in that project, in fact, I was watching a video. I, ah, let me round up with this. I was watching a message, well, video message, and the lady there gave a testimony she said she was a receptionist in her office and she was the playful kind that plays with everybody and all that and in her company it's an advertising company they were about to do an advert for peak peak milk and they needed a small child to do a voicing for the peak milk advert but the young child did not make it on the day of shooting. So they were in, at a, in a problem. Somebody now remember that there is one young lady that usually mimics a baby's voice and plays with us. So let's try this lady out. So they called a lady who is a receptionist. And does not think of herself more than just being a receptionist. They called her and she came and did the pick milk advert. And that pick milk advert hit. Nobody knew that it was an adult voicing as a baby, voicing as a young girl that did the advert. I'm talking about Helen Paul. That's how Helen Paul emerged. Tatafo, that's how she emerged. She was a receptionist. She was sitting in an office as a receptionist, watching, praying. I knew her. We were in the same church. I still have contact with her. But she was there, and the blessing hit her. She had been practicing. She had been playing with all the people in the office with that voice. It was still that same voice that opened the door. That that voice now became... And from somebody that was getting 9,500 naira per month as a salary then. She moved to getting something worth, in fact, no, not something worth. She was now getting, she signed the contract that year and she was getting 400,000 naira per month. Do the, ma do the maths. Do the maths. So when I say go through your training, Please go through. 
Because you don't know how far God can take you from that training. You don't. 9,005. Next level. All the praying of next level. It cannot pass 18,000 or 20. Or even 40. Not 400. Not 400. So please understand this. God needs you to understand what you are doing at such a time as the full course. So, course, you need to know what you are going after. This season, all that God has prepared, every last thing that is available is tied to you, focusing on the instructions he's giving to you, running that race, worshipping him, understanding the blessing, understanding who you are, walking in the trainings that is given to you. Some of the things when you pray and say, Father God, kill my boss. And he says, no, my, your boss is there and I want him to continue punishing you. And you say, eh? you wake up from that. No, no, no. He's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not punishing you. He's training you so that you can be a better version of you and not be sloppy at your work. So that when the day of requirements comes you have all that they need they search through the whole realm the whole kingdom of egypt to find a man that could help they only found one why that one was obedient to every of the trainings and still saw god in all the trainings so see god in all your training they are saying it's not 1,000 naira. It's a training. If you can believe God for your naira and that the naira, yes, it's 1,000 and you need to buy things in dollar. You just need to believe God for bigger sums of money to come into your hands to buy the thing you need to buy. And when the dollar goes down or the naira comes up, whichever one that happens, you are better off because you now have the capacity to command several hundreds of thousands of naira. If you are buying something $2,000, you know you need 200,000 naira and you are releasing your faith at that level for 200,000 naira and that 200,000 naira is coming. The day the dollar goes down to 500, you are still having the capacity for 200,000 naira. So it now changes to how much? $4,000. You can buy more things. It's training. Petrol has gone up to 800 naira. It's still training. Reason, if you can believe God to have full tank, if they ever bring down the price, which they will, it's just a matter of time, they will. Because when every of the refineries are pumping, the price will come down. Supply, demand, economics. So it will. Now, if the price ever goes down, the man that could not bat an eye and pay 40000 to fill his car can buy a second car and fill the two cars without batting an eye. Because the money now, the price has gone down to half. He is able to buy the two. Do you see now it's training? So some of the things that we are complaining and arguing about is training for you. When you go to America, when you go to Canada, when you go to Spain, when you go to all those places and you relocate and you get there, the faith of you being able to fire here and do great things will push you further there. They'll be wondering where did you come from? Which planet did you come from? Why? You have been trained here. So let's stop worrying about the training. And let's just embrace it. If Joseph embraced it, Abraham embraced it, Isaac embraced it, embrace yours. Embrace yours. You don't have a teacher that is teaching you properly in school and you're having to do your own research, it is helping you. Because when you get into an institution, you will not have a teacher teaching you. The lecturer will just tell you, that's the notes, I see you in the exam hall. Where do you start from? If they've always been teaching you, where do you start from? Do you understand now? Everything you are going through in life, if you are praying, is working together for your good. If you are praying. And I know Nigerians pray. That's one thing I know. Nigerians pray. In fact, I think last year they were saying, we are not praying again. We are praying, pray, 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 pray. But Nigerians pray. Rise up to your feet. Nigerians pray. Rise up to your feet. Nigerians pray. If 
I te- tell you now that, oh yeah, let us pray. I know you say, yes, Nigerians pray. But sincerely, the prayer we started with, take time to pray this week. I can guarantee you some of the answers you are looking for will come this week. I can give you that guarantee. It will come this week. You've been wondering how are they, how I'm, how, you know, I, 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 this is what I'm believing God for. And the dots, how to, how to join the dots, you don't know. But I can guarantee you, focus. Pray, Lord, open my eyes. Flood my heart with your wisdom, with your insights, with your revelation. Flood it, Lord. Show me what to do. Give me guidance. Help me to know the steps to take. The instructions you are giving me at such a time as this. Help me, Lord. As you pray those prayers, he begins to tell you. He says, close this leak. Pastor mentioned it in the service. You close it. He says, okay, yeah, now. Handle this one. I want you to do this. You do it. I can guarantee you before Sunday comes, you will even not wait for Sunday. You will rush to give me your testimony. And you will say, ah, Pastor, God did it all. I, in fact, I was shocked how he did it, but he did it. Somebody came there and you were telling me the story. Because these things are real. They are very real. As God was speaking to you, he was also speaking to me. I have things I'm going to do with this message. I hope you have yours too. I hope you do. Close your eyes and pray. And talk to God about the things that you like him to do for you in this week. Heavenly Father, we lift up our voices today and we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the fullness of the blessing, all that it entails, will be unleashed in our lives. And that Lord, every leak that we have allowed Satan to dwell upon, we close them now in the name of Jesus. We declare, Lord, we are obedient to your instructions. We say, Lord, speak, Lord. Your servant listens in the name of Jesus. We declare, Lord, give us instructions, directions. And we draw grace to not just hear the instructions, but to run with them. Executing them with excellence in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as many that are believing you for one miracle or the other, I join my faith with theirs. And I say, let there be an answer from heaven speedily this week in the name of Jesus. Let the answers come. Let the emails come. Let the tests, uh, texts come. Let the phone calls come. Let the interviews be done this week in the name of Jesus. Lord, confirm your word. Let it be obvious to all that we are in prosperity reign. That we are in the season of the blessing. That the blessing is speaking for us. Let it be obvious to all. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you the praise and all the glory. We say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God shouted. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor Inka, for bringing God's word undiluted to us you know sitting down there I just kept on asking are you staying with God enough Ella are you with God enough and may you be with God always and may God be with you and may you be around God may your ears be open your eyes be open and your heart be open to receive what God is about to do in this season for you and around you in Jesus name Amen. God bless you, sir. It is my privilege this morning to make welcome. First time as an army, so can we have, if you're a first time at this morning, can you just lift your hands? Come on, church, let's give them the King's Word welcome. Can I see anyone, first time, uh, can you just signify by raising your hand? Do I have anyone here this morning? Okay, second time, please. Oh, I have someone. Welcome, brother. God bless you. 
We're happy to have you in our midst this morning. You could have been anywhere else. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory. Second time, uh, please. It is your second time in this house. Can you signify, please, with a show of hand? Glory be to God. Service holds here every Sunday, 9 a.m., 9 every morning on Sunday, every Sunday, in this auditorium. Hallelujah. We also have midweek service that holds every Wednesday at 6 p.m. here, online and on site. Praise God. Prayer storm with Dr. K every Monday at 9 p.m. Okay, I think he's on the Instagram link, Dr. K Live, every Monday by 9 p.m. Yeah, but you can also copy the link on the church platforms, WhatsApp platform, I mean. Hallelujah. We also have our Kingsword Ali Moshe prayer that holds daily. Every morning, I think 6.30, yes, 6.30 to 7 a.m. every morning. Monday to Saturday, praise God. We also have our social media platforms. Please follow us, like us, like our posts and comment. We're on social media. We're on Facebook, I think, Instagram. Yeah, on all social media platforms. Okay. Please also, we, in the course of the week, we might have some information we want to put up. Kindly check the WhatsApp groups for information and the announcements. Hallelujah. All leaders... Lead us in the house. You have to wait behind immediately after service for a brief meeting. Then, for those of you in um, zone two, right? Zone two, kindly stay behind just briefly to meet with your leader, Mrs. Amenwe. Hallelujah. That's for those people that live around Alibo Shore. Yeah. Council, Eliasu Road, Idimu, and Isheri. Kindly stay, wait behind to see Mrs. Amenwe for a brief meeting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God praise. I, I think that's about all for the announcement this morning. So do join me to make welcome Pastor Taffy. God bless you. Hallelujah. Have we been blessed this morning? I have very short time because our time has been very well spent. All right. We have a short video to play before I go on. Media, over to you. Deborah Ajayi regards the worship of the Most High above all else. Our mission is to reach out to the world through worship, thereby creating an army of worshippers who would worship God in spirit and in truth. She has had the honor of ministering at conferences, Christian gatherings, and concerts. Her spirits filled famous single, Oyin Momo, has attracted testimonies from far and wide. She also won the next rated Afro Traditional Gospel Artist Award at the Exclusive Gospel Awards 2016. Deborah is an inspiring worshiper, and her songs are known to create an atmosphere of God's presence. Not only does she make awesome gospel music, her lyrics are rich in gospel and revelation and nothing short of compelling.
Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. How many of us enjoyed that short clip? You know, she's going to be here on the 5th of November, um, worshiping with us. Is somebody excited about that? How many of us watched administration during the last um, Supernatural? She was there, she was in Supernatural ministry. I believe we're going to have an awesome time um, in God's um, presence. So we want you to prayerfully, um, prayerfully begin to prepare for this meeting. Don't come casually. Prepare for it. Um, prepare for an experience in God that you have never had before. Um, as a church, can you just look at me briefly? Um, they, they, they're done with that. You know, we're going to be having um, some time in God's Word. We're going to be doing a group study together on the subject of worship. It's called Untainted Worship. So we're going to be sending a link on the WhatsApp. On a, a, there's a Bible plan. You have to download this app called U Version. U Version of the Bible. We'll share the link um, in the church's platform. We want to encourage. I know you have devotionals and so on, but take time to just go through this devotional with us as we prepare for this event. We want it to be an event that marks our lives forever. We want to be a life-changing, a life-transforming session. You know, the theme that God gave us is healing streams. And I believe that emotionally people are going to be healed. And people are going to be healed from what physical healings will happen, you know, by the grace of God. And we're going to trust God that even things in our lives, situations will be fixed in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, so as we prepare for this event, download that um, U version app. They are, from tomorrow, we want to start going through the devotional. It's going to be talking about the subject of worship. You know, how you yourself, you are a sacrifice. You know, you yourself, that life, that worshiper's life, God is interested in the life. You know, even before the song, you, 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 God, God, it's you that God hears when you're singing, not just the lyrics. Are we together? Are we together? You know, so we want to go through this session together. And just learn how we can, you know, um, sacrifice, make better offerings to God, you know, with our lives, with our worship. And then we want, also want to use an opportunity to reach the community. Perhaps there are people that love good music and wouldn't mind coming to church just because of that. They are not saved, they are not born again, or they are backsliding. But it might just be your own opportunity to reach out to them and invite them to come. So we want every one of us to buy into this idea. You know, there's a story I like to share about when my cousin invited somebody to church and the person eventually became like a state pastor in the Kitty State. And, you know, we went to the person's house together. It was an idea that we should share that flyer. You know, but we went to the person's house together. And just giving that handbill, you know, changed that. That man's wife was attending deeper life. The man was not a church goer at all. At all. You know, so it wasn't like somebody we put from a lot. So we gave that ideal to the guy. He showed up for that meeting and he kept showing up and he kept showing up. And one day I heard it was the, um, a state pastor somewhere. You know, so you don't know how far it can go. Make up your mind. Everybody, say everybody. Tell your neighbor for me, everybody. everybody. You are, you, 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 you. You, 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 you. You have to invite somebody for healing streams. Start praying about it. Identify your neighbor that you want to bring for that meeting. That seed, you don't know whether it will bring you an eternal reward. Are we together? Just because somebody came for that service, you don't know the extent to which that seed will grow. So each one of us, we are going to be um, inviting people individually. We are also going to go out as zones. Your sooner pastors will tell you when... We want to go out, we want to share flyers together. Um, and we're also, as a church, going to um, go out. That's the Saturday on, the November, on November 4th. We want to encourage many people as possible to come here to this auditorium so that we can just make a noise, make a blast around this axis that we have a special event um, coming from. But trusting God, you know, it is said that one out of every four people are experiencing depression. You know, people don't like, why is my life like this? Why are things not going the way it is working? Why am I where I'm at? You know, people are not happy. My colleagues have gone, or people have gone ahead of me. People are comparing themselves with others. 
you know, and so constantly there's a gap between where you are and where you want to be, and sometimes it creates an uneasiness, you know. But in God's presence, you know, tears of regret will be wiped away in the name of Jesus. In God's presence, God will bring healings to people. He will bring hope. He will bring an assurance. And He will bring interventions in the mighty name of Jesus. Can we rise up on our feet as we give our offerings this morning? I want you to just sow your seeds. I remember last week we talked about the fact that, you know, um, God receives it in proportion to what you have. And so you can delightfully, if 50 naira is all that you have home and abroad, if you give it, perhaps you would have given more than all of us in this auditorium this morning. You know, I want you to just connect with God and just once again we have your trust in Him. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. You never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. You never let me down. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you because you are our hope and you are firm foundation. This morning we give in faith, we give with joy, we give with expectation, we give with gratitude, knowing that you love us so much, knowing that you care so much about us, knowing that you are watching out for us, knowing that you want to bless us and multiply the seed. You said we should give it, will be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. May we give to our bosom. In the name of Jesus, our hearts are on you, God. Our eyes are on you, O oh God. We quit from looking at men. We quit from looking at people. But we choose to put our eyes on you. And we thank you, Lord, because you will bless this house indeed. You will bless this church indeed. You will bless every giver indeed. You will bless every member indeed. Jabez looked at his life and said, Hey, oh, that you will bless me indeed and make me more honorable. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will bless you indeed. The Lord will make you more honorable. The Lord will multiply you a thousand times more. In the mighty name of Jesus. You have been through water. You have been through fire. But in the name of Jesus, it's bringing you to his wealthy place. It's bringing you to a wealthy place. The Lord will make room for you. Where you have had contentions. Where people have strove with you. In the name of Jesus, God will give you a bring you to a new place. It will make room for you in the land. And you'll be fruitful in it. We give in faith. We give in adoration. And we thank you because you're good. Lord, I expect expectation is from you and we thank you Lord for many testimonies many testimonies about jobs about liftings about businesses about open doors and as your people are blessed thank you because they will impact this community this community will know that there is a church in this place this community will know that there is a people that are committed to the Lord this community will know that there are kingdom builders in this house because they will be impacted with our seeds they will be impacted with our money their lives will be touched with our love their lives will be touched with our love their lives will be touched with our resources in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus and we thank you Lord because the glory of God will fill this whole community, fill this whole local government, fill this whole land because we came and because we gave in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus, the knowledge of the glory of God will fill this whole land because I gave and because I came in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.